How about a midweek blitz? That is Zach Bourne. I am Austin Ward. We didn't get to it on Sunday, so we're going to do it now on Wednesday on the podcast daily after a busy few days for Ohio State, which is bound for the Cotton Bowl. But really, Zach seems like Ohio State's right in the middle of offseason. I thought you were going to tell me like the season starts next week because that's how excited I am for next football season already. Like, you know, I, I know, I know a bunch of Buckeye fans are excited about New Year's Six Bowl. I know, you know, Ryan Day and the coaching staff and the players take uh, a New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, they don't take it for granted. They don't take it lightly. Like, it's a great opportunity for them. Me, I'm ready for next year already. Like, get me to training camp. Get me there. I'm ready. I want it to be August. I'm ready for football season. All right, so Zach is skipping the Cotton Bowl. He doesn't want to see, you know, a look at the future. Devin Brown, Lincoln Keen Holtz playing in that game. Just fast forward, get to spring ball, get to training camp in September next year. No interest in this game, right? Well, you know, this is the thing. <laughs> I, I hate to say it. You know, I, I grew up on, you know, January 1st being the day, right? You got the Rose Bowl, the Orange Bowl, a Sugar Bowl. I mean, everything was on January 1st, right? So I grew up on those games having so much meaning, but let's be honest. I mean, now we've gotten to a point in college football where college football playoff is really what matters. Right. And then you want to start talking about next year and you've got, uh, you know, a, a playoff of 12 schools. Then you're like, Oh, here we go. And now that's what it's all about. So it's like all this buildup, especially with this being the last year of the final four and looking forward to a, to a 12 team playoff next year, it just seems like the, the lackluster new year six games have just kind of fallen to the wayside. Yeah. They've, they've run their course. They've lost their value. Uh, it's really unfortunate that we don't have that 12 team playoff in place. Now this would have been a great year for it. I think not just for Ohio state, but probably for Florida state, which deserve to be in it, but that's, a conversation for a different day. We don't have to argue about the selection committee. I do enough of that in other places. But as the Buckeyes do go through this December, Zach, uh, Ryan Day talked on Sunday. We haven't seen any coaching changes at this point to the staff. You know, Day said when I asked him about it, he'd consider, oh, well, the fact that you can recruit right now, you have the transfer portal open, maybe that would make some sense, but he hasn't done anything at this point. The portal opened on Monday. There are 12 Buckeyes currently in there. That's a larger number than certainly in years past. I think that's probably a product of a bill coming due because they've largely done a great deal of retaining their roster over the last couple of years. And then obviously there's going to be changes at quarterback starting for the Cotton Bowl, but then obviously for next year as well with Kyle McCord out. When you look at just those couple things, what's the most pressing part of managing this month, Zach? There's a lot going on this month, you know. Um, I feel like you know you you look at social media and um, so many people are acting like, hey, this is a glorified spring game. And I don't think the coaches are going to view it that way. I think they're going to view this as being a very important game to springboard uh, the entire program into the off season, into spring ball, and so on. Like you want uh, you. You don't want the season ending on a bad note, right? They last year they ended on back-to-back -back losses. They do not want that this year again. They want um, some confidence. They want that winning feeling going into the offseason. There's obviously a whole bunch of huge decisions that Ryan Day has. I would argue that this is Ryan's most important offseason since he's been a head coach. Um, you know, and I would say Ryan, um, for those people that don't know him, I mean, you, you and I have um, gotten to know him pretty well. I consider him a good friend. Ryan's one of those guys that if I got in a street fight, he would be one of the first guys I call. <laughs> like he's that kind of guy, right? Because he's loyal. He'll give you everything he's got. He'll fight for you. He's that guy like you want on your team. You do not want to go against Ryan. And so I think maybe that's been his biggest fault as uh, the Ohio State head coach is that, you know, he's fought so hard for some of these assistant coaches, for some of these players, um, and he is such a uh, just family guy. He's, he's, that, he's that guy that, you know, when you're on your team, he'll do anything for you. And so I think we finally gotten to a point within this program of he's got to make some tough decisions on guys he doesn't want on his team anymore, right? And that includes players, that includes coaches, um, and really he's never had to do that before. And I think that's, I don't want to call it his downfall. That's, but that's probably his one fall is that he hangs on to things a little too, too long. And he trusts, uh, that things are going to turn around. He, he puts a lot of trust in people. Um, and so you're seeing that right. 12 guys in the portal already. Um, granted, you know, 
not every not everyone uh, is going to belong at Ohio State, right? There's a lot of guys who have been in uh, in this program for a long time and feel like they want opportunities elsewhere. And by all means, they're great for them, right? But it's also the same thing with the coaching staff. Ryan's going to have to make some tough decisions based off the production the past couple of years from some position groups on not living up to the standards at Ohio State. And so Ryan's going to have to make those decisions quickly, especially with the portal open, with uh, recruiting and officials coming up and National Signing Day coming in a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, not to be long winded, there's just so many things that Ryan has to manage right now. And it's the first time where he's ever going to have to kind of make those tough decisions and tell people, hey, this isn't for you anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a fascinating part of this offseason for Ryan Day. And I think that there's separate conversations, right? Like one are like really well compensated adults that are on the coaching staff. And the other, of course, like getting compensated to some extent, these players and NIL and the transfer portal, like they're different. I don't think the conversations are one size fits all. And they're like managing all of that is why Ryan Day makes $10 million a year because of the immense challenge of doing so. The coaching staff side is, I think, where I like as we've gone through this week. Like that's where I'm more interested in what happens and and the timeline for doing so, because when we look back and like it's a week and a half since Ann Arbor, and if one play goes different, we're not having any of these conversations. But you know, we talked about the early interception, you know, from Kyle McCord, and this is several years into it with Corey Dennis, who has nobody else, you know, banging down the door to try and hire him away. And, you know, is he the most experienced or best Ohio State level coach that could be out there? I don't know. That's not I'm not in the meeting room. I can't really answer that. But it seems like the development this year for both, you know, Kyle McCord or Devin Brown, uh, it, was it the same from previously when you had C.J. Stroud and Justin Fields and like truly gifted generational talents? I would say on paper, I don't I don't think so. Parker Fleming, it seems like a more cut and dried conversation to me. The special teams have been bad for 14 games. Um, and he's making half a million dollars. Like, make that move and put James Laurinaitis on the road. And then you have other spots where there's going to have to be long, hard looks. And there have been conversations now going back for three years with Larry Johnson. And but those parts, like there were special teams issues in in the game. There were there was the costly interception in the RPO, you know, read and and throw and all that for Kyle McCord and his position coach. And then the defensive line wasn't able to help, you know, really get off the field and impact that game uh, in Ann Arbor the way maybe. Zach, we had seen them do it at other points throughout this year. So, like, you can't wait around forever. Like, the coaching carousel is already spinning the same way that the portal is open. I, I feel like there's got to be some more urgency for Ohio State in December, and I don't know if you agree with that or not, but they're not in a playoff. They can't win a championship. The Cotton Bowl is, to some extent, an exhibition game. So, like, I feel like I, we should be seeing some of this stuff going on now, and I, I'm like, why haven't we? Well, the, there's two things is that coaches are coaches are judged off of two things and two things only the production of your unit on the field on on game day and recruiting right those two things that's how you are judged as an assistant coach i think there is a standard at ohio state that has not been upheld um from some of the assistant coaches Granted, that's not for you and I to judge. That's only for Ryan Day to judge. It's not for the fans to judge. There is only one person that knows if those standards are being met, and that's Ryan Day. You know, mm -hmm. you and I can sit here, Ohio State fans can sit here and say, hey, listen, yeah, I mean, Iowa had four sacks against against Michigan, right? Ohio State only had one. We could say, you know, quarterback, right, didn't perform. You could talk about special teams, right? You, I, I, I mean, we could go down the line of – the biggest game of the year units not performing up to standards. Um, and then you match that with the recruiting in the off season Th that Ryan day is the one who's breaking down the film. Ryan day knows what the play call is. Ryan day knows what everyone's supposed to do on every single play. Like that's his job to give a thumbs up or thumbs down to the assistant coach. Then on the flip side, when you talk about the players, you know, there's been so much talk about Kyle McCord and the hate that he's gotten from Buckeye fans. Um, you know, some of his inconsistencies throughout the, the season on Saturdays. Here's the one thing um, that I would say in regards to that. It's just tough nowadays because as a college athlete, especially the quarterback at Ohio State, you've all, you're always going to have a ton of pressure. 
But now that you're getting paid, you have even more pressure on you, right? And there's certain standards that need to be met. And so it's the same thing that you always talk about the assistant coaches being held accountable for certain things. Well, now we're in a new age of college football where players are held accountable. Now players are almost treated like NFL players, right? Guys on Sundays, if you're performing, thumbs up. If you're not performing, we're going to look to replace you or we're going to cut you, save your money and allocate it somewhere else. And I think Mm -hmm. some of those conversations are probably being had this off season because as coaches, multiple coaches across college football have said, Hey, we basically have a salary cap. We are given so many funds a year to create a roster around NIL. Now you got to say, Hey, are guys performing or are they not? Are they costing me 150, 200 K? Can I allocate that somewhere else? Right. And so um, those tough, those conversations are hard. This is, I'll wrap this up with this. There's one mistake that Ryan could make in this whole thing. And it's not moving with a sense of urgency. We saw it last year where this is kind of a new world of college football. And Ohio State's always kind of been once to be reserved. Um, you always see kind of the SEC, you know, some of those big time programs that um, I don't want to call it forward thinking, but maybe have always been a little sketchy in the past that are always the ones that are moving the needle first. Well, yeah. guess what? Now in this new age of college football, you're allowed to do that, right? And so the last thing you want to do if you're Ryan is not work with a sense of urgency when it comes to coaches, right? Getting guys on the road, getting guys recruiting. And two, going into the portal and and getting after dudes. And um, that's what I'm most interested to see. So you brought up a good point with coaching staff. You know, I would argue it's players. But then again, I think we could both agree that really it all comes down to Ryan Day and his sets of urgency with players and coaches. Like that's that's the final answer. Yeah. No, I I mean that's I think we we completely agree. Like what what happens or doesn't happen in the cotton bowl. I think that used to be the way people talked about. December, like, okay, maximize these bowl practices. And those are important without question. And then you're going to build momentum. If you play well in that bowl game, it's going to catapult you into next spring. And there may be some element of truth to that. Ohio State talked about that the last time they weren't in the playoff that, you know, the Rose Bowl, they felt really good about the way they responded. Marvin Harrison Jr. burst on the scene in that game. They're like, all right, well, you can build on that. But it, to me, it's like everything other than December 29th. It's the decisions that are made. It's Yes, they're going to be young guys that are going to play in that game, but they're going to have two weeks of bowl practices to show what they can do. That's most specific to Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz, right? They're going to be the ones that we're watching because Ohio State needs a quarterback to actually go play in a game. But like, it is the urgency. It is the work in the portal. It's finishing off the signing class, which is pretty important as well with 22, 23 guys for Ohio State to sign and, and people across the country still pr- trying to drop money bags from the sky for Jeremiah Smith or whoever else that's out there. This is a compressed schedule and it's hard. Like I don't envy anybody. I don't envy Ryan Day, even with that money, anybody on their coaching staff, assistants, guys trying to make portal decisions. This month is brutal. It should not all be happening at once, but guess what? It is. So you have to attack it aggressively and not, and it can't just be like, well, we'll get back after December 29th, uh, December 30th, we'll start turning the page like to 2024. Like that's too late. I, I, that's what, I guess that's my point. I get all this stuff in all three phases has to be done now. Yeah, th- there's only one thing that doesn't make this month crazy. That's make the Final Four, right? The, the teams that are in the Final Four college football playoff have a much more relaxed month of December than they do, uh, you know, people that aren't. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more, right? It's, um, you know, people have always, I know Buckeye fans. Here's another thing. Everything you see on social media, don't believe it. There is so much garbage that's out there about rumors and everything else that uh, just are so far from the truth. I'll leave it at that. Um, Two is, you know, it's like so many people have said they want Ohio State to act like the SEC. They want them to be Georgia, Alabama, you know, some of those massive power schools. Well, guess what? This is what those schools have always done, right? They force guys out that aren't performing. They want to restock um, with dudes that, listen, they can get a couple of years out of and, and replenish the roster, and it's a little bit cutthroat, right? I mean, let's be honest. That's, I love Urban to death, but Urban brought that kind of attitude to Ohio State of, you know, instead of uh, fulfilling guys' scholarships and seeing them through the process and, you know, letting them graduate, it's kind of like, hey, we're taking your performance on the field and what you bring to this program into account. 
And now mm-hmm. with NIL, you have to do that. And so those, I already mentioned it, but those tough conversations are happening and, and people can't get upset with Ryan Day. People can't get upset with the program. If you have a guy like Kyle McCord that leaves, you know, there's obviously rumors out there on that, how that whole situation went, but it's Ryan Day's job to win every game that he plays in, beat the team up North, right? Win the big 10 championship and make it to the college football playoffs. That's his job. And so he has to make the tough decisions like we're talking about to make or to put people in places for those things to happen. Because guess what? He loses a team up north next year. He probably won't be around, right? right? He doesn't make it to the college football playoff next year. He probably won't be around. So guess what? What's happening now is setting him up for success in the fall of next year. And people have to see it's not tunnel vision right now, right? There's a big picture to this that honestly, like you said, I'm not envious of Ryan Day because he's the only one that quite honestly sees the whole picture and what he, you know, what pieces he wants to make or what, what moves he wants to make to put the pieces in place in order to be successful and and make this program move forward. So whatever that is, he has to do it with a sense of urgency. Like we talked about the last thing he can do is sit on his, on his heels and think things are going to happen, but people can't judge Ryan day for the moves that he's making right now. You just can't. So there's the key part in there, Zach, it'd be the last thing. We'll just turn this whole thing into three and out. Um, you look at the quarterback spot and the most important planning for the future. You know, Kyle McCord is in there. What led to that decision? The conversations with Ryan Day, the McCord, uh, you know, Kyle McCord last week after the game, whatever. Like, it's not going to change the de- decision now. So all that Ohio State can do is move forward. There are options in there. You've got an experienced guy, like uh, Dylan Gabriel out there, Riley Leonard in the transfer portal, Will Howard. Those are the guys at the top. There have been a lot of people that are enamored with – um, you know, some of the bright spots that Cam Ward has produ- produced at Washington State. You know, those are the the top targets, right? That's what's available. Do you believe Ohio State will swing aggressively on those? Do you have a favorite amongst that group? What do you want to happen at quarterback? Um, I definitely have a favorite. Um, do I think they swing? I hope they do. You know, it goes mm-hmm. back to um, – my my point of saying Ohio State's never really been the aggressor in college football. They've never been the ones, you know, that kind of swing first. They're always conservative from that standpoint. I hope there's a sense of urgency. I would say, in my opinion, Dylan Gabriel's got to be number one. Um, I'm a huge fan of him. You look at his stats, you look at, you know, his brief stint at UCF and then what he was able to do at Oklahoma – I mean, if they have any kind of defense at Oklahoma this year, they could be, oh, my God, they could be undefeated in the college football playoff, right? Right. Um, So I I love what Dylan Gabriel brings. I also love the fact that Dylan Gabriel is a lefty. You have Aaron Nolan coming in who I know everyone's saying is can be the guy next year. You can't – freshman quarterback's not going to be ready, just not going to be ready. And so Aaron Nolan's not going to be the guy next year. Granted, could he get – a bunch of um, practice? Could he get a bunch of reps? Could he grow astronomically as a quarterback next year? Yes. In my opinion, you bring in Dylan Gabriel, who's a lefty. Air Nolan's a lefty, right? Dylan Gabriel's a one-year lease. Guess what? Come in. Maybe bringing a guy like Dylan can bring a Mecca Buka back, right? Can Hey, Travion Henderson's like, I got a guy who can use his feet, who can throw it. Maybe I'm going to come back, right? Mm-hmm. It, that name's going to entice some guys to think differently about the NFL draft. Um, and then guess what? After a year, you give it off to Aaron Nolan, who your playbook is already set up for a lefty. You've already got everything kind of in line. Um, so I love that move. I would say my second would probably be Will Howard. I love you know what he is able to bring, I think. If you were to ask some people inside the Woody, Will Howard might be number one pick on on some of those people's boards um, just because of the leadership, the style of play that he has. Um, and obviously, you, you you know, I all the rumors are out there. They're looking at Riley Leonard. Um, you know, I think he's a really good player when healthy. I think there's got to be some question marks about that. Um, and then the, the, the rumors are swirling about Cam Ward. I know everyone thinks like he's the slam dunk. He's the number one choice. It goes back to kind of the rumors that I was talking about. I, you know, I think he's a great quarterback, but does he fit what Ohio State's probably trying to do at this point in time? I don't think so. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that you and I have probably talked to some similar people about Cam Ward. We, who knows what? I mean, Ohio State's going to almost certainly have to wind up with someone from the portal, right? Like that's For they sure. lost one, so you have to bring one in. They're trying to get to four. They lost a veteran. They're going to want a veteran. So, you know, I think in that pecking order, Cam Ward does not sit at number one, number two, or number three. But as we're saying, you can't just only focus on one. Like you're gonna, you'd like to go in that order and get your first choice. But I, I don't know what's going to happen throughout this month. I don't know where. I mean, if Dylan Gabriel he's taking a visit to Oregon, or Riley Leonard's taking a visit to Notre Dame, is Ohio State going to be able to get that done in the next week or two with any of those quarterbacks? Do they wind up in a situation where suddenly Cam Ward is is there and is the best of, of option on the board left? I mean, I I don't know. I'm not making a prediction, but I think if you your point is if you're going through that pecking order, he's not number one the way I think people maybe outside the Woody view. Like that's not my understanding. Correct. And and we don't know that, but just from things we've heard, and I think if you look at what Ryan Day has been trying to do the past couple of years, you look at CJ Stroud, right? For two years. You look at Kyle McCord, like Cam Ward's a great football player, but you obviously can't revamp your entire system for just a quarterback on a one-year rental, right? You got to find someone who, um, who's going to fit into your program, going to fit into what you want to do. And I just think I don't think. Well, I don't think Cam Ward is one of those top guys. You look at the other three of you know Dylan Gabriel, Will Howard, uh, and Riley Leonard. It fit. It's more of a plug and play. Uh, and be able to put him into the system that's already there and be able to set the guys up behind him like a young Lincoln Keenholz, like Aaron Nolan. Like it's going to fit their style of play of, as well. You know, Cam Ward's going to, yes, he can throw it, but he's going to want to run it. You know, like you look at Lincoln and Air, like, yes, they can run, but they want to throw the football. Like that's right. that that's why Ryan Day went out and, and got those guys because they more they are more passers than they are runners, but they have the running capability. All right, so yeah, we could keep going on what needs to happen in December for probably two or three more hours, but we're not going to. The Blitz is a quick-hitting show quicker than that, and we'll have Zach back because things are probably going to change fast. We'll do it again next week as long as Zach is willing. We'll break it down uh, on the podcast. I'm there, man. I'm ready. Like I said, I'm ready for football season. Like I'm ready to ramp this thing back up again. Like Give me another 12 weeks. I'm ready. I think you're ready for the end of the month where we have always that last week I'm at the bowl site and we wind up doing like a show while you're on a boat somewhere. I think that's what you're ready for now. I will be. I will be on a boat this year. I can't wait. You South Florida man, you're calling my name, especially today. Columbus freaking raining, Ooh. snowing. I'm ready for some South Florida sun. All right. Well, that's coming. And so is some beautiful weather, hopefully, in Dallas as Ohio State gets ready for the Cotton Bowl in an interesting month uh, for the Buckeyes overall. Appreciate Zach Warren, as always, for jumping on. Uh, with a midweek blitz on the podcast daily. He's Zach. I'm Austin Ward. We'll talk to you later.